My next guest has been a star of the London and international musical theatre scene for longer than she would like me to tell you. She's also a hugely successful recording artist, Radio 2 DJ, veteran of many special performances at venues including the White House and Sydney Opera House. She's just returned from Broadway in a new production of Stephen Sondheim's Follies and heads off soon to open it in Los Angeles. Please welcome Elaine Page. <laughs> to see you. Oh, lovely Stephen to see you. Sondheim's Follies on Broadway. I know. Who can believe it Again. after all these years? Well, I know. I can, so is this, it's taken you a while, hasn't it? Well, yes. I mean, initially I went out there uh, to do it for three months uh, at the Washington uh, Centre. Yeah. Um, and it was a bit of a success, I think, you know, and they decided that they would take it to Broadway. So we played three months in Washington and six months on Broadway, which was really rather unexpected, to say the least. And it was a big, big hit. I think it's the biggest hit Stephen Sondheim's <gasps> ever had with one of his shows, apparently. Wonderful. Now, yeah. you're then, you're now you're just about to shoot, well, shortly, over to L.A. to open it there. Yes. Uh, they, uh, they said, would we like to uh, do... There's a six-week space in a theatre in L.A. Would we like to take that on and go over there and, and do it there. So mm. I'm just back for a few weeks and then I'm going to hot foot back over to uh, to LA to do it for, for six more weeks. It's been such fun, I must say. I mean... And here's a CD, Bernadette Peters, Jan Maxwell, <laughs> Danny Burst, Ron Reigns and Elaine Page as Carlotta. You get that lovely number. Yes, I'm very lucky. I get the... the uh, well, it's one of the great musical theatre numbers ever written uh, for an actress. And I'm it's still called, here. I'm still here. Yeah. And, uh, it, in fact, uh, Stephen Sondheim told me that he actually actually wrote it for uh, about Joan Crawford. Gosh. So uh, so I did a lot of research about Joan Crawford and uh, he came in to help and, and directed some of us, uh, you know, in, in what we were doing. It was just the best time. To work with the man himself. Well, that's, that was it. I mean, he's a such treat. a legend. And, yeah. uh, and to hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak, uh, mm. it, you know, about the various lines and, and lyrics, exactly what he meant by them, it, it was really very, very special indeed. You're hugely experienced in music. Musical theatre. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, Cats, Grisabella, Evita. You know, for a role which have ever been associated. Playing over there and playing those over there. Yes. What's the difference between English and American audiences when it comes oh, to musicals? Oh well, I think it's you know I think it's an, uh, part of the just the characteristic of the, of uh, American people. They are much uh, more overt and loud and, and brash outgoing. than we are. Yeah. And, you know, and and so as an audience, they, that comes across. I mean, when before the show goes up a, 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 in, in an evening, you can hear the buzz in the audience. They all talking to each other very loudly and quickly. And uh, and I think. So so that the response is is the same kind of thing. Whereas over here in England, we're much more, you know, that English reserve, uh, and so that's the difference. And uh, and of course, with Evita, you mentioning Evita, that the irony of all of this to me was, I thought it was rather funny, is that uh, it took me 34 years to be able to, uh, to to sing Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, in New York, because at the end of Follies, I was asked if I would do a couple of concerts at the Lincoln Centre. So it took me 34 years to sing as me, <laughs> Elaine, on, on, in New York, and, uh, and the show, Evita, uh, was in effect, the one that evicted yeah. us, Follies, from the Marquee Theatre, ah. because it, it, we had... We could only stay there for six months because Evita was coming in. It's just about to open, so I think that's rather ironic, don't you? I... It always moves me, that song, still, when I hear you sing it. Does it move you to sing it? Uh, yes, it's one of those funny things that uh, whenever I sing a song from a musical that I've been in, and particularly that, I suppose, because it was the, the first big break that I got, um, I can always remember how Prince and his direction to me... Uh, about that particular song and telling me, you know, that to, to lock eyes with audience members and, uh, and, you know, and the various things that he told me, uh, that's what I remember every single time I still So what, he it. said fasten on He some... said, well, don't forget, it's not just a beautiful song, it's, it's really a political speech. And she's on the balcony of the Casa Rosada and she's giving a speech to thousands and thousands of people down there in the square. And, and I was up on a very high platform uh, in, the, in that show and he said, I want you to look down on them and look at somebody. He said, and you'll see that they'll get rather uncomfortable <laughs> with you looking at them in the eye. And it's extraordinary. Even today, when I sing it in concert, I 
usually lock onto somebody or other's eyes along the front row. And uh, and if I linger a little too long, I can see the person kind of get a bit uncomfortable and <laughs> either nudge her husband or look away or whatever. It's quite funny. Oh, well, I gather, because you've had your encounters with all kinds of people, but particularly with royalty, I gather there was one slightly unfortunate encounter once with the Queen Mother. Oh, well, it was really... It's rather amusing in, in hindsight, but at the time it was pretty ghastly. Um, I was doing um, Anything Goes at the Prince Edward Theatre and, uh, and the Queen Mum, it was 1989, and she had asked to come and see the show for her 89th birthday. And, uh, and of course, it was, you know, I'd been singing and dancing and tapping my way through the entire eight-show week. It was the end of the week and every kind of sinew of my body knew that tomorrow was a day off. And uh, nevertheless, I sort of ran up the stairs to be presented to her in the royal box. And, well, you get up, stand up a minute, you be the Queen Mother, yes. OK? So you're the Queen Mother. So I decided that I was going to, uh, you know, and after I'd been introduced, I was going to sink into a deep, formal curtsy. So I was introduced, as a, the lady in waiting said, uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. And I looked at her, and it was so amazing to see her standing right in front of me, and I took her hand and I sank into a deep, formal curtsy, you see, and I got down there and I kind of... I couldn't get up. I got to... <laughs> was racked with pain, sort of going, <laughs> Your Majesty, and we were wobbling around for what seemed like an eternity. Ladies and gentlemen, Elaine Page. <laughs> I couldn't get up. <laughs> See you, Elaine, in Paris in April, only in all. I'm back tomorrow with a show full of stars from the West End. Michael Moore, the Melbourne Storm, and TV Sue Johnston and writer Kay Mallard from Heaven, a masterclass from the Wolverine Chocolatier. See you at three. Bye-bye for now.